Hey, Coach Alex Dodd from the Clemson Insider. How big is it for your program to secure the first number one seed since 1998 for you guys? Uh, it's massive. I think that, uh, you know, you're always wanting to be number one in anything you do. Uh, and that's the case in our program, and that's the case at Clemson. So uh, getting that top seed, you know, and, and earning it throughout the course of the entire year, I think is is a uh, it's fantastic, and, and the players should all be credited with uh, with what they've been able to do. Hey, Coach Trevor Gross from CUTigers.com here. Uh, congratulations! Um, you got a little bit of a break until you play on May second. Um, how is uh, Say you feeling after the game the other night, and and how is the rest of your team from a health standpoint? Yeah, we're doing well. I, I think that you know there there are always bangs and bruises after uh, after a tough match, and uh, you know the guys have done a good job regening on Sunday and then they were in for treatment today before the announcement. So uh, nothing major, just uh, just some recovery time for them. And uh, more than anything else, what I emphasize to them just now is, uh, you know, our game is such a cerebral game that it's important for them to have fresh minds as well as fresh bodies. So we'll take a little time off, but then get back at it later on this week. Does it make it even more special that you've had such a, a kooky year with COVID and the midseason draft and everything that you're in this position now in the spring? Yeah, I, I tell you, it's a, it's a unique year in so many different ways. Uh, and the difficulties and the challenges the players have faced, the coaches have faced, the support staff has faced, Clemson has faced uh, with everybody else in the country it's, uh, or in the world. Uh, so it's something that we'll never forget. And the way that it was handled and the challenge that it put uh, in front of us, I think at every turn, uh, we did what we needed to do to get to this position. So I'm, I'm unbelievably grateful first and foremost, but more than anything else, proud. Hey coach, this is Todd in Greenville. I just wonder what the biggest challenges were in this kind of split season and, and uh, how, it, how you guys attacked that. Well, the biggest challenge that we had probably happened in the fall because we did have some COVID outbreak where we were we were forced we were supposed to play one game a week and we were forced to play three games in a week, I think three times. Um, I think that was the hardest, you know, from a physical standpoint on the field and preparation standpoint because the game's not meant to be played three games in eight days or three games in seven days. It's, it's meant to be played one game a week, which we were able to do this spring, uh, which was great. Um, the rest, recovery, the ability, you know, you got to remember these guys, it's spinning plates is what we call it. They've got so many things going on in their lives, you know, as varsity student athletes, a place like Clemson that, you know, to focus on, you know, three games, training, rest, recovery, uh, academics, uh, family situations now, you know, COVID, I mean, you can't, I, the list just goes on and on. So the balancing act this year was probably the, the greatest challenge, but in the springtime, you know, our rhythm and our tempo was really, really good because we were only playing that one game a week. We didn't have the issues with COVID. Coach, speaking of that, the, the schedule during the tournament is going to be a little bit more similar to, to what it was in the fall with the, with the game every few days. How much of an adjustment will that be for you? A little bit, but again, we're prepared for that, you know, the players actually, I mean, physiologically, they need about 72 hours uh, between games. And the committee has placed the games four days apart, so we should be able to recover. Mm -hmm. It should give us enough time to know who our next opponent is, do a little bit of research on them, but really just stay true to Clemson and the way that Clemson plays. And if we do that, like we have all year, then, uh, you know, I think we'll have a chance and uh, hope we make a great deep run in the tournament. Coach, how big was the pit game? Um, not just to get the number one overall seed, but but for the confidence heading into the tournament. I, I think it was it was really important. Uh, you know, again, I said this last uh, Saturday night. Winning the game in the ACC championship in November secured a home field advantage for that game, no matter who it was against going into the tournament. You know, some teams have finished their season, particularly in the ACC. They're going to have even longer period of time off. Both Pitt and us played that game and it was a really, really good preview of, you know, it was almost an elimination game without being an elimination game. So from a confidence standpoint, 
being able to play a quality side like Pitt and to be able to uh, to play the way that we did and perform the way we did with, you know, seemingly pressure on us uh, to win in front of our fans was fantastic. It was a great way to culminate a difficult but very rewarding season. Great Coach, season. Pitt, Pitt had, uh, was leading the nation in goals going into that game. You shut them out. Do you think that had as much to do with your, your ball control and your possessions as it did your defense? I think it's everything, right? Whenever, whenever you get a, uh, a shutout, uh, a clean sheet in soccer, I think everybody contributes. And it's from the, from the forwards playing defense as much as the goalkeeper playing defense. And uh, it's from the backs, you know, possessing the ball and passing it well to the forward scoring the goals, um, which happened for us, or, you know, Quinn McNeil's a midfielder who scored the first goal. So I think, I think again, it's a team effort, uh, whether it's a clean sheet or whether you're scoring three or four goals. But I think that we've, uh, we've shown with our team that we have good balance throughout the team and we have good depth in our team. Obviously, uh, you know, looking at our squad in the fall and then our squad now uh, who secured that number one seed. Which, what does Quinn bring to you? Excuse me? What does Quinn bring to you in particular? Uh, it's kind of funny. He, he, he's a local product who can play a lot of different positions and does a lot of different things. But, you know, I know the basketball program talks about Clemson grit, and, and Quinn brings that Clemson grit and that South Carolina grit to our team. I mean, he turned down, he had a lot of opportunities to go outside of South Carolina to play soccer. And he chose to come to Clemson and, and just love Clemson. And sometimes that extra 2% or that extra 5% of being a native, being local, uh, you look at the great, you know, Manchester United teams and, and they they were on the back of David Beckham, Ryan Giggs, Paul Scholes, all Manchester boys who grew up through there, you know, watching Manchester United play. And Quinn's the same, you know, being from Greenville. Ben Erkins the other night stepping in to the lineup and, and doing a job. It, it, it means more. It doesn't mean more to them, but it's something that John Martin, Quinn, uh, Ben Erkins, the local guys bring in terms of their passion for Clemson. I know that when Quinn first started, he was, I think he was scout team player of the year. <laughs> Is that a sure yeah. sign? Is that a sure sign of, of what's coming? Well, I think if it, it is, and I think that if you're a scout team player of the year, um, what it means is that you're looking to not only help yourself, but to help your team. And those values in a player, any coach will take. Uh, and I think that that's, uh, you know, and Quinn continues, and he sets out to make himself better in whatever small area it is. And that's why I was so happy to see him score the goal the other night. He, uh, and it was a fantastic goal. Great. Coach, I'm interested in your, your two uh, freshmen from Senegal, um, Diop and, and Sila. You didn't have them in the fall, uh, but they're able to contribute for you this spring. How pleased are you with how they've been able to, to come in right away and, and just fit right in with the team? Yeah, I, I think that they've seamlessly fit into the team because of the leadership that we have in our team uh, and, and embracing them. They're, they're both very, very talented young men. Um, but again, you've got to remember, even though they went to school in Florida at Mount Verde, they were home in Senegal. And, the, and the, the cultural difference that they had to adjust to coming back here and getting into a university system with a lot of independence that they didn't naturally have down at Mount Verde, uh, I give those guys a lot of credit. And, uh, you know, Silla is, is uh, going through, you know, Ramadan right now. So he's got some, you know, faith and belief things that, he, that he's dealing with in terms of that, 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 that are challenging for him and, and how many he's got his own challenges. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very, very proud of them and happy they've been able to make such a good contribution to our program. Coach, obviously the, the tournament's going to look a little bit different this year, but are you happy that you guys get to stay pretty close to home and stay in North Carolina? Yeah. No, I mean, I, I, again, we'll be in places – uh, that are familiar to us. Uh, you know, we're not flying across the country and playing in California. We're not, uh, you know, we're in North Carolina and we, the ACC footprint is in North Carolina. Uh, so we're happy that we don't have to go too far away, but we do regret having such a great year 
that we won't be able to host because if we were the number one seed in any other year, we'd be hosting all the way to the College Cup. And, uh, and our fans deserve that. Uh, but the way they've treated us this year, the way they've stuck with us, even when they couldn't come to the stadiums. And, you know, our players would love to be playing here at home. Coach, you lost three ACC first teamers from the fall that would have played in the NCAA tournament had it been in the fall. Um, how how much more parity do you think there might be in this tournament just across the board, especially at the top, the, the higher uh, seeded teams that um, may have lost so much talent from the fall? Well, I, I think, you know, it, it, you can't focus on what you've lost. You've got to focus on what you have. Uh, I don't, you know, and that's what we've done. We're so proud of, of Grayson and Kamari, uh, it, you know, and Maya that, that, you know, we want to see them succeed. And I don't know whether you guys saw or not, but Robbie Robinson scored his first goal in the MLS yesterday. So, you know, we're here to help people be successful once they leave Clemson, not just while they're at Clemson. So for that, for that matter, you know, we're focusing on what we were able to do this spring, uh, what we were able to do this spring and this fall has been sensational. And, and now we're just going to, you know, take that into the tournament. And I think everybody else is the same way. I know, you know, other teams, Georgetown, Wake, some of the bigger teams have lost players. Uh, and some have retained their players like Pittsburgh. So, you know, it's, it's, it's the best team on the day. You know, maybe not the most talented.